Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Their Programming using Scala. In this video we're going to continue talking about binary heaps and we're going to look at how our binary heaps can be viewed as trees. So in the last video we said that the two rules of binary heaps were that as a binary tree they have heap ordering, so the parent is higher priority than the children, and that the tree has to be complete, which means that we fill in each level of the tree uh, from left to right until it's complete before we move to the next line. So, at this point I want to start looking at what a binary heap might look like and talk about the various operations that we have on them. So, let's start off with I'm going to make my binary heap uh, I want to use large numbers as high priority turns out that actually, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to use small numbers as high priority. The reason why I often use small numbers as high priority is a lot of times these things are built where the priority is time, and so the thing that happens first would come off of, of the heap. So we have a 1 at the root, and then let's go ahead and let's put, uh, let's actually go with a 5 as one child. and a 2 is another. The children of the 5 have to be larger numbers than 5, so let's say 7. And 6, and then we'll just put one child on the 2. And that is a 3, and I'll go ahead and link these things up. Um, actually, let's reverse the direction on that. So that this looks like a proper binary tree. Something like what you're used to seeing from our previous chapter on BSTs. Okay, this right here would be a valid heap, uh, assuming that low values are high priority. It, and that's because it satisfies both of these rules. It has heap order. So given any node, its children are higher numbers, lower priority than, than it is. And I picked these numbers intentionally to point out that, for example, this three would be a higher priority than the five. That doesn't matter. The 3 is not directly descended from the 5. It can be lower in the tree as long as everything that is a direct uh, ancestor of it is actually a higher priority, which it is in this case. We have the 2 and the 1. Similarly, uh, it doesn't matter whether the small value is on the left or on the right. Uh, the re relative values of the two children is completely unimportant in our uh, binary heap. All that matters is uh, that it satisfies these two properties. Okay, so here we have an example of a binary heap. I want to move stuff around a little bit. And what I want to do now is talk about the addition, the operations of adding and removing elements from this binary heap. So if I'm going to add a new element to this binary heap, where does the new element go? Well, based upon rule number two, we know that something has to go here. Okay, so we're going to put, in some sense, the new element goes right there, and it will be connected in. There's no question about that, because if we put it any place else, if we put it below the seven, the six, or the three, our tree wouldn't be complete. And so that's basically not allowed. Um, let's say that the value that we were inserting was uh, a f another 5, or actually let's go with, with a 9. Okay, A 9 would be perfectly happy sitting right there, and so it would go right there. Now let's do another insert. Well, once again, based upon the requirement of being complete, our next insert has to go over here as the left child of the 7. 
So we can link this in here. And let's say that we were going to insert, um, I don't know, the value four. By the way, putting in ties is, is not a problem here. I just haven't done one yet. Uh, but if I try to put in a four right here, that's a problem because the four can't stay there. Then we've, we've broken rule one. We've maintained rule two, but we've broken rule one. The way that I like to think about our addition here is that this space, the space we know we have to fill in, is what I will refer to as a bubble. Okay. Uh, here's the value that's going to go in our bubble. We'll keep it in a temporary variable off to the side. And what we have to do is we have to look. Can this value go in the location of the bubble? And we answer that by looking at its parent and determining if it is a lower priority or lower or equal priority than its parent. Four is higher priority than its parent seven, so the seven has to be copied down. And now this is the location of our bubble. So we check, can the four go here? And the answer is of course no, because four is higher priority than five. So the five moves down and our bubble moves up one more level in the heap. Can the four go here? Indeed it can. The one is higher priority than the four, and so our four stops there, and we no longer need this temporary variable, and then we have our new heap. So that's the basic idea of, of doing inserts. Uh, let's say that I inserted another two, okay, just to, to make sure that everyone watching sees how this is going to work. The two here, our bubble has to be placed below the five because that is what is required in order to maintain completeness. And so we can link that in. But the two cannot go where the bubble is, so the five has to sink down and our bubble is there. The two can also not go below the four so the four has to sink down and the bubble goes there. The two does stay below the one and so our two is there and we're done adding into our heap. So that's the basic idea of, of adding. What about removing? Now, once again, removing, we have to maintain these two rules, but when we remove from our priority queue, we have to remove the highest priority item. That's, that's the whole idea of a priority queue. That's what the heap is supposed to be good at, which means this one has to go away. But the one can't go away. There has to be something there. In fact, the space, the space that has to be vacated is this one, because if we don't get rid of this five down here, we wind up breaking rule two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take this five and move it over here as a temporary variable and pull it out. And whereas I picture for adding a bubble rising up, I'm going to picture a stone sinking down through here. And uh, I almost feel the, the way that I've done this is not quite ideal. But uh, you might have seen the game called Plinko, where little, uh, you know, either a disc or a ball bounces back and forth between pegs. That's kind of what happens here for our remove. So the five can't stay there. Why not? Well, because the twos are higher priority than it. Now, because the twos are a tie, we can pick either one. I'm actually going to say that the stone falls um, off. Uh, let's let's go to this side. Had this been like a you know, 1.5 or something, um, because at this stage now we know that so the five can't stay here, and the reason is because the three is smaller than the five. The general rule is we need to find the highest priority of the two children. So in this case, three is higher priority than nine, and then compare that one to the five. So for example, if this had been a four instead of a nine, well, the three is a higher priority than the four, we can't move the four up, and it's because of that that it has to be the three that moves up here because our stone has now reached a leaf node. That's where it settles, and we're done. Let's do another remove, just to make sure that we understand this. So we take our two that had been at the root. We were, uh, 
Oh, sorry, no. The two that was going that was at the root is being returned. This becomes a stone. And we have a temporary variable here from the bottom to keep things complete. The seven cannot go up at the top. So we look at the two and the three. Either one of them is higher priority than the seven, but because the two is higher than the three, we can't move the three up. That would break keep ordering. We have to move the two up. So the two goes to there. Our stone falls down to here. The four is higher priority than the six. The four is also higher priority than the seven. So the four moves up and our stone sinks down because we're at a leaf. That is where the seven resides and we're done. So we've gone through a description of what the heap looks like as a binary tree. We've gone through uh, the issue of adding, uh, how we do our add operations, how we do our remove operations. Turns out peaking is just looking at, at the root. So it's very simple. Note that because it's complete and all of these operations, either a bubble went from the bottom up to the root or a stone went from the root down to uh, a leaf, possibly. Both of them could stop short, but that was the longest path. And because it's complete, we're absolutely guaranteed that everything is order log in. We'll come back in in the next video and we'll talk about the fact that this is actually not how we're going to implement this.